Good morning, guys. Welcome to the show. Yesterday, we talked about running back beasts. Today, we're talking about running back pests. Yes, the complete opposite. On the other side of the spectrum here, running back pests and how it's going to affect your workhorses, those early down running backs, guys like Brees Hall, guys like Bychan. How is it going to affect them? I'm going to deep dive into it and give you guys some statistical data and some things you should be aware of before you decide to draft these workhorse running backs in the in the early rounds. Are guys like David Montgomery going to be passed? Are guys like Tyler Algier going to be passed? I got five pests for you and the impact surrounding it. This is a very, very important episode, I would say. Almost equally as, or probably even more important than the Beast episode we released yesterday. Go back and check that out. If you are new to the channel, I am an independent. I don't have a four-letter network supporting me, nor do I care to ever have one, and that's why I keep my information truthful, honest, and I actually want you to help and actually help you guys win, okay? That's my goal. So guys, very important that you guys smash it, tap it, slap it. I also look at the analytics. I think about 70% of people that watch the channel, they see the video, they haven't actually hit subscribe. So hit that subscribe button, it really helps the channel out. And of course, it also helps you out because it's the only channel giving you guys real advice, truth, and actually gonna put you light years ahead of the consensus, AKA the can sheep says, lion mentality. Smash, tap, it, slap, and hit the thumbs up, and grab the 16 round draft, so should sleepers, breakouts, Optimal players drafting trial. And guys, this will literally put you light years ahead of everybody else. Grab it, use code SMASH to save it. Upon checkout, you get them as a combo too. Grab the Sports Summit tickets. It's a virtual conference, guys. The first time ever held online from the comfort of your home. Come hang out with NFL athletes, Kyrie Williams, Pat Frymuth, Rashid Shahid, and more. It's going to be absolutely amazing, guys. Okay? I've linked it below. All right, let's dive into it. Remember, hit that thumbs up, smash it, tap it, slap it, guys. Let's get through it, okay? Now, I got five running back pests, but I'm going to give you guys some context here that's very, very important, okay? Last year, okay, I got my notes here. My notes are like chicken scratch, but believe me, they're very, very effective, okay? Last year, I lost it. I did a, a post last year. It was like it was when I found out that Chabernet was drafted to the Seahawks, destroying Kenneth Walk Walker's value. Now, silently, Chabernet acquired 108 attempts last year. Mind you, he's still a pest this year. And I think he takes a step up this year, but that's not the pest I'm talking about. I got five other pests, but I'm giving you guys some context here, okay? So 108 attempts last year, 462 yards on the ground, 4.3 yards per carry, one touchdown, and 33 receptions. Now, I did some math. I looked at some numbers. Walker finished 19th amongst running backs in PPR. This is the important factor I want to make here. If you just factor in 33 points, if you're talking one point PPR league, the 33 receptions that Chabernet had, just the 33 receptions, never mind the 180 attempts, 462 yards, and everything else he stole, including the one touchdown. If you just factor in the 33 receptions, it would have jumped Kenneth Walker's final finishing numbers from a 19th finisher amongst PPR, amongst running backs, to around 10 to 11, depending on, you know, based on your league, okay? So that's a 10 per 10. Fantasy point player jump. He could have finished 11th amongst running backs, but he finished 19th. Kenneth Walker did because of Chabernet. Now you're saying, well, again, you know, Chabernet didn't do much, but he did. He did. It's a big impact. So carry that information, that data, that context as we start talking about these five other running backs. This is very, very important, okay? Let's go. First running back that I think is the biggest pest. Now, we're talking pest, and there's different levels of pests. There's like pests that come into your home that are like, you know, uh, a possum, for example. I don't know if that's even a pest, but, you know, a uh, cockroach, right? A fly, a flea, right? There's different levels of pests. And this one is a high-level pest, man. It's almost like a, a big-time rodent in your house, okay? The, you know, it's, And we're talking David Montgomery, okay? Let's talk about it. Now, if you look at his numbers, you would say that he's the RB1 last year. 219 attempts, 1,000 yards rushing, 1,015. 4.6 yards per carry and 13 touchdowns. That is crazy, everybody. Now, he is going st to still, he's still going to be there. So now I look at a guy like Jameer Gibbs. I'm like, dude, Jameer Gibbs, first round draft capital, very expensive. And I love Gibbs. I want to get this off, the, off on the table here and on, on record that I absolutely love Gibbs. I think he's one of the, one of, if not the best running backs in the NFL. The problem is, is a David Montgomery problem. The problem is the first drive, David Montgomery is coming out. And I keep talking about this in all my videos because I want to hammer the point home that I will never draft a running back in the first round knowing that the backup running back, David Montgomery, or theoretically the starting running back, because based on last year, he had more attempts, is going to be coming out on the first drive. Mind you, I love Gibbs. Yes, Gibbs finishes on top. 
but I still think it limits his ceiling. And, you know, there's other guys that you can get that are going to have a higher ceiling than Jameer Gibbs that you want to invest a first-round draft capital pick. So David Montgomery, a big-time pest, is going to be annoying. And believe me, guys, I love Gibbs. But David Montgomery is going to be a pest. So for me, do, do you draft Jameer Gibbs? If you get him as your RB2 in, you know, round two, sure. But as your main guy, it, it, it bothers me, okay? And I'm sure it's going to bother you as well. So David Montgomery is going to be a pest. And we have contact. We have last year to prove it, okay? The second pest, again, if this is making sense to you, guys, hit the, hit the thumbs up, grab 16 rounds. And in the 16-round draft solution, I'm actually going to explain to you how to avoid these pests or mitigate the impact of these pests, right? So adding depth, getting the right player, all that stuff is laid out in 60 rounds, okay? You have a backup plan for a backup plan. So grab it. Use code SMASH or save. I've linked it below. The second pest, okay? We don't have as much intel on this one, but it's a Blake Corum. Now, I love Kyron Williams. He's coming to the Fantasy Sports Summit. I mean, you get a chance to ask him questions at the Virtual Summit in August. So make sure you guys grab your ticket. So Kyron will be there. But the pest I'm talking about here is Blake Corum. Now, listen, I like Blake Corum. I think he's great talent. But the sad thing is, similarly to Zach Chabernet and some of these other running backs I'm going to mention, these guys can be workhorse and RB1s on their own team, but they're not. They're stuffed in behind the workhorse, which is Kyron Williams. Now, we only saw a sample size of what Kyron Williams can do last year. He only played 12 games. But in those 12 games, man, did he make an impact. 100, sorry, 100. 1,144 yards, 12 touchdowns. And a ton of yardage, man. What does he have? Like, yeah, yeah, 12, just under 1,200 yards. What am I thinking? What I was saying is 228 attempts, tons of attempts, okay? 12 games. And he was a fifth round pick, guys. This guy made an impact, but this guy struggled with a foot injury. It's kind of lingering on. I think he's dealing with some issues right now here in the OTAs. They draft Blake Corm, who was an absolute beast in college. 27 touchdowns on the ground. What do you have? A ton of attempts, 258 attempts, 1,245 yards, man. This guy was a beast in college, okay? Like I said, he could be a workhorse on his own, his own accord. Now, he's stuck behind Kyron, but is he, though? And the fact of the matter is, the, the acquisition, the drafting of Blake Quorum has done so much so, turn me off of Kyron where I'm avoiding Kyron round two. I'm just not drafting him. I love Kyron. I hope he has a great year. Top 10 finisher, but Blake Corm is good enough that I think he's going to be a big enough pass where this is going to be a 60-40, 50-50. This is going to be a disaster. Mind you, I still think Kyron is the one. I don't want to discount anything away from him. All I'm saying is that Corum is a beast, and he's going to eat. So I'm almost likely to take another another running back with a minimal pass and then get Blake Corum later for value. And again, if an injury happens to Kyron, boom, you've got yourself a workhorse running back, okay? Is this making sense, guys? Smash it, tap it, slap it, hit that thumbs up. The next pest here, we talked about Montgomery. It's a pretty big pest. Blake Quorum is going to be a big pest. The third one here on paper can be a big pest as well. We're talking about Braylon Allen on the Jets, fourth round draft capital pick. And he could have gone a lot higher. It could have been a workhorse on any team that he was drafted on. This guy's a monster. He's a beast. 6'2", 238 pounds. Some people say, oh, I'm not worried he's A.J. Dillon. No, listen, this guy's better than A.J. Dillon. A.J. Dillon just sucked. He's just a big dude that just never did anything, okay? Brillen Allen's actually really, really good, okay? Now, here's the thing. He's behind Brees Hall. Brees Hall is the beast. Last year, Dalvin Cook was in, only limited to 67 attempts, which is beautiful, but you were getting... Uh, Dalvin Cook on the tail end of his career, he was brought in for death because there was uncertainty with Brees Hall doing well because he was coming off that knee injury. Now Brees is fully healthy, but they drafted Braylon now with relatively high draft capital, fourth round, still high. It's a guy they believed in, they scouted out, and they're going to use him, even if it's around the goal line. So uh, is this deterring me from Brees Hall? No, but if I'm choosing between him and Bijan, I'm leaning Bijan because of this reason. I think Braylon Allen is an absolute beast. And we're going to get into it with Bijan next. But, you know, because we kind of know what the animal is there. But with Braylon Allen, we don't know what type of animal we're getting. Out of Wisconsin, 5.4 yards per carry, man. The guy put up some good numbers. 1,242 yards, 11 touchdowns. The guy was a beast in college. The guy can get it done. He's a monster, man. He's a big dude. It's like having two beasts. Now, this is great for the Jets. Terrible for fantasy, okay? And Brees is coming off round one. So is it something to be concerned about? Yeah, man, you should have it in the back of your mind that Braylon, Braylon Allen is no slouch. And now in a 2K buy-in league, I ended up getting buy jam round one, and I got Braylon Allen super cheap for like the 12th round. 
love the value. So you need to be aware of this. So don't be surprised with this channel. I'm letting you guys know everything. Belt and suspenders, being aware and being ahead of the curve, right? So you guys are aware, always thinking ahead. So if you do draft Brees, be aware and don't be surprised if Braylon Allen comes in and gets a ton of goal line work or does what Zach Shabbard did to Kenneth Walker last year, steal 100 attempts, 33 receptions, and push Brees out of a potential top five fantasy football finish amongst running backs in PPR, okay? Or whatever flat platform you're on. Braylon Allen, be careful, okay? That's all I'm saying. It's awareness, all right? Now, again, this is why 16 round is, if this is making sense, 16 rounds, I lay this out for you guys, giving you guys all the optimal players. I give you guys actual mock drafts where I'm actually showing you how I would draft, how a roster would look like if I were to draft this. So it's absolutely optimal for you, given in all, everything packed in and baked in with all this information, okay? All the statistics, all the data, all the depth chart, everything. 16 rounds, guys, it'll put you like just ahead of the competition. The next pass, Tyler Algier, we're looking at more of a cockroach here. And he's going to decline. Last year, he he was lucky he had Arthur Smith. I don't know whether he paid Arthur Smith or whether By Jan was dating Arthur Smith's girl. I don't know, man. But at the end of the day, Tyler Algio got way more volume than he should have. 186 attempts. Way too much. He shouldn't have even got 86 attempts. Never mind eight or six attempts. Eight or six. I wouldn't have even given eight or six attempts. I would Never mind 186 so, listen, I love By Jan this year. Now, people in the comments saying, you're not pronouncing it right. You know what? You're a troll. Get off my channel. Because it's funny. I'm the only one pronouncing By Jan right if you're new to the channel. By, B-I as in bi-weekly, and Jan as in ran. And it's so funny because the trolls jump in. They're like, who's By Jan? B-Y-E-J-A-N. Hold on a second. So, you're admitting the Jan part is right, but you're you're calling him B Jean? Wouldn't it be B E E? J-H-O-N or something. Either way, I'm pronouncing it correctly and that's the bottom line. And everybody else is pronouncing it miscorrect, like incorrectly with Bijan. Bottom line is this. Bijan is the first overall pick for Fantasy Football 2024. Him and offensive coordinator Zach Robinson have already come out and said, man, that they're going to run him like CMC. He's hungry. He's ready. And every time he touched the ball last year, he looked he looked absolutely amazing. I love Bijan. I think he's the real deal. I'm all over him. And last year, man, 200, what do you have, 213 attempts or something like that? Dude, that goes up this year, okay? That goes up. I'm expecting a 200 and 50 is my projection to 280 attempts on the ground, a ton of receptions. I would say 40 reception floor and at least 10 touchdowns on the ground with a bunch of receiving touchdowns, okay? Sky's the limit. They got they got Kirk Cousins there. If he stays healthy, obviously that's going to be a factor as well. Same thing with Brees Hall over there with Aaron Rodgers. Those quarterbacks play a huge factor. One of my listeners was mentioning that. Definitely, definitely they're going to play a factor. But these guys are going to run. They got Michael Penix um, behind Cousins, so they've got a backup plan. I don't know what the heck the Jets are going to do without uh, Aaron Rodgers. But at the end of the day, that's another fact that I like Bijan, a.k.a. Bijan, or Bijan, a.k.a. Bijan, better than Brees Hall. I think I think the quarterback situation is a little bit better, okay? So Tyler Algier, more of a cockroach. He's going to see less volume. And they got rid of Patterson, who somehow managed to get 50 attempts last year, which was crazy, okay? Last guy here is a pest, is Marshawn Lloyd, which actually I, I think you can get him later. Now, I looked at this. I don't want to spend too much time on this other than to tell you that Marshawn Lloyd, if you are drafting Josh Jacobs round three, Marshawn Lloyd is more explosive, could be a workhorse again on any team that he'd be on. And again, I think this is going to be a situation that looks exactly like the Detroit Lions. I think Marshawn Lloyd is going to get more work than you think. Josh Jacobs is good. I just don't think he's outstanding. Had a down year last year, just under 1,000 yards. Had a good year a couple of years ago. But prior to that, was decent. Just never an explosive, outstanding running back. He's above par. I give him that. But just not a guy that's just like over the moon, exciting, explosive, like a Saquon, a Brees Hall, a Bijan, okay? He's good. And that's why I think Marshawn Lloyd has a chance with the high draft capital, third round pick, to be a major factor in this offense. He's going to be used. So again, another situation where if you get another running back, maybe let's say a Derrick Henry, he's a little more safer, I think, than Josh Jacobs. You get a Henry and then you can get a Marshawn Lloyd later, who has the opportunity to not only get his share of workload, but maybe even take that job, especially if an injury happens to Jacobs. But Marshawn Lloyd, explosive workhorse. He's got that explosive ability. Go watch his tape, man. That's what I recommend. Do your own research. Uh, don't believe in my convictions all the time. Do your own research on top of what I tell you and put two and two together, okay? That's what I tell everybody, all right? So Blake Corum, Algier, Braille Down, all these guys can be pests. But what's sad is that 
so much running back talent that's so good, like these guys I mentioned that got drafted in Marshawn Lloyds, are just stuck behind these running backs, which sucks because they could be workhorses on their own, but also they're taking away precious fantasy points from the true workhorse running back. And that's what I think the NFL is trying to do. They're trying to really get away from the workhorse running back. But I'm going to make sure that you guys have the best possible running backs on your rosters. So grab 16 rounds, hit the thumbs up, smash it, tap it, and turn on that notification bell. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the show, guys. Have a happy Friday. Pests, be careful. Make sure you gauge the size of them and try to draft running backs with minimal committees. I know they're going the way of the dinosaur, but I explained which ones to get in 16-round draft solution. And there's a ton of value later, guys. There is, literally, this year. But you also want to make sure you get a couple of these guys, these workhorses in the early rounds as well, even if the pest is there. Okay, guys? You want to minimize the pest. All right. Subscribe, thumbs up, smash or tap it, slap it. I'll see you in the next video. Daily content coming to you every single day. We're out. We'll talk soon.